What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. Today I have Hartford Regional Champion and a really good friend of mine, Jose Marrero. What's up, Jose? How are you doing today? I'm pretty good. What's up? Uh, for those of you who don't know who you are at this point, a little bit of a shocker, but talk to us a little bit about yourself. I'm Jose Marrero. I play in the Florida area, and I've been playing since 2010. All right. That's, that's a good, good summary. Is this your first regional win? Yeah. All right. So, Jose, what led you to play Ray? I know you've been... The, the constant joke in the community is that you love to play Rayquaza, and you've played Rayquaza over multiple formats, multiple years. So why now, and why Rayquaza? I like the speed it has, and I feel like the, the matchups are like 50-50 or better. And I'm 3 for 3 on day 2s with the deck, so I just stuck with it. All right, let's talk a little bit about the list. Um, so interesting cards off the top. There's a Tapu Koko GX. Can you talk to us about that? Why? What matchup that's for? GX is pretty much for the Pikaron matchup. If they don't see it coming, you can just take a one shot on the Pikaron. They put five energy on board. It's also good against uh, Whale GX. If they have eight energy or six energy at least, it's 300 damage. And overall, it's just it's just a good attacker, even against like Trample Garb. You can get an early Sky High Claw. You don't have to go over Quaza for one shot Garbodors. Okay. And uh, but I was just. How about the, how about the Zerkatry GX? I know the Zerkatry is a little bit of an interesting card because it's not really a, a heavy hitter or anything. But why is that in the deck? What what matchups are you specifically taking that for? Well, that was in the deck for like. Decks like Vessel Queen or Night March or like Executor, decks that may, might not have Silent Lab, you can get a free win against. But the card in general is just randomly good. Like sometimes you can like let loose and then use the GX attack, take a card out of the hand, make your opponent go down to seven or go to seven prizes, you can make it awkward on them. And the, even the attack, 100 damage, discard the top card. I've won gains from discarding crucial cards off the top. Okay. I think the card's just solid overall. How about the Oracorio? It's it's kind of an obvious uh, tech, I guess, but what? why specifically are you... You have Oracorio plus Zerkatry to deal with these uh, discard-based decks. Can you talk to us about that a little bit? Yeah, I, I didn't want to take a loss of 9 parts of Best of Queen, so I just kept Oracorio, didn't even change the list. And actually, in day two, I played a Night March and destroyed it. Okay. All right, well, without further ado, let's jump into your tournament report uh start us start us off with day one and how that went for you all right day one i started really poorly <laughs> but let's see round one i played against charlie lockyer okay uh he was playing the skeptile of optimum deck so at first glance i was like that seems pretty easy and then i completely forgot about the volume that locks pretty much basic attacks oh yeah basic pokemon attacks i was like Wait, I ought to lose to this. So, game one, he gets the bottom out. And he also played the Brazing Jex that brings up all the Pokemon back up. Okay. I forgot what the Jex attack does, but that's how he, he just blocked me with the bottom that way. So, it's game one, I just do. And two, I ended up winning. I think I like let lose to him, and just, I just goose me. All right. Sorry about that. We had a little bit of technical difficulties. We're going to restart right here with Jose's tournament report. All right. Round one, I hit Charlie Lockyer playing Skepta Vaplum. He played the Vaplum that can't be hurt by basic attackers, basic Pokemon, so I ended up losing that series. But I did get it to game three. Um, but he was able to take game three, just getting two Bopplums out. Round two, I played against a mirror match. His name was Sammy Allen. It was just a Rayquaza mirror match, nothing crazy. It was just I ended up winning that 2-0. I was just able to take first two prizes both games, and then from there, it was just one shot after one shot, just trading one shots. Mm -hmm. Round three, I hit Frank Diaz. He's playing Zark Toad, 
but I thought he was playing Picaram. So the way I was playing was really bad, knowing that he, not knowing that he played Toad. So game one, he turn one Toad locks me out of nowhere. I didn't expect it. My hands like six items, and I'm like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> He like he had like a I let loose him into like turn one toe DC Guzma on my on my Sudowoodo. I was like, oh, okay. So I lose game one. It was a, like a long game one. Game two, I think he had a lone Zorua, and I think I donked it or like turn two donked out. So we went immediately to game three, and then game three, I don't remember too much, but I know he he won a close game. Like he got Sudowoodo out turn one. And then I was just struggling to like set up. So, I, but I, overall, I think I played that matchup really bad in the beginning. So I start the day one and two. So not looking good. So the next, I'm gonna put these next three rounds in together because they're all three peak rounds, three peak rounds in a row. The next three rounds, I was able to win all of them because of. Coco GX, I just went Coco GX, knocked out a Picaram, and then eventually one shot at another Picaram with Rayquaza. Um, the round six Picaram was actually Jimmy O'Brien. He was probably my closest match. We had some good games there, but I was able to beat three Picarams in a row, so that was nice. So now I'm 4 2. Yeah, 4 2. Yeah. Round seven, I'm against someone named Maxim. He's playing. Ultra and across my Malamar. <laughs> so at this point, I'm like, all right, I'm out of the tournament. Done. I'm going to go get some food or something. And I'm like, oh, wow. I feel like I'm playing it back in standard right now. Ultra and across my Malamar. All right. Really bad matchup for Rayquaza. So game one, so surprisingly, I managed to 2-0 him. I don't know how. I just, I just did. It's just like I was able to use Shaman to, like, bring the prize trade back into my favor. I like Necrozma, and then he didn't play like Dusk, Dusk, Dawn Wings. I mean, he didn't play the Dawn Wings, so he wasn't able to like take a free knockout and still be safe. So that helped. So I ended up winning that one. So five two. Round eight, I'm against Christopher Beener. I think that's how you say it. Last time I played this guy actually was at Worlds, 2014, I think. When he okay. he he beat me, he smashed me with Verizian. Genesec. I think it was 2014. That's yeah, that's 2014. The one Estrada one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he was playing Zora Garbador. So again, I'm like, well, I'm out of the tournament. <laughs> and now I got to hit a Zora Garbador. Somehow I ended up waiting 2 0 here. And Field Blower came in clutch. And I think I got turn one Sudowoodo before he did. So that helped. Um. Uh, hmm. So yeah, I'm six two now. And the last round, I'm not I'm not gonna take any chances after starting one and two. So I ended up tying <laughs> IDing, IDing with another peek around. So that that would have been my fourth peek around. So technically, I went three zero one against peek around. So day one I finished six two one. Pretty good day one. Day one. The the Jose the class, class back in, back in six two one. Classic comeback, you know. <laughs> All, right, so All right. So day one's day done. One's How do you feel about everything? everything. Super excited just because I'm just like, okay, I didn't expect to just win out five in a row and then ID the last round after starting one and two. Mm. So now so you're now going to day two. two. Give me that matchup. Yeah, matchup. Let's go. Day two, round 10. I play against Matthew Campbell. Uh, he's playing Sable Garbador. I wasn't too sure how to play against this matchup, so I actually zoomed for some pointers and stuff before the round. And I was able to 2-0 him. Actually, in game one, I milled a Guzma, and then I had to use a Guzma. And then I, I, was, I didn't have Via Seekers in my hand, so he giraffe rigged and removed both my Guzmas, like turn two or three. So immediately, I, I have no Guzmas to play with in round one. Game one, so I'm like, I might lose this one. But no, the, I was able to win because of Zerora. Put energy back on board. And then game two, I made sure not to discard. I had both Guzmas in the discard. And then from there, I was just able to, like, pick off, like, Lele's and, like, Garbador. And so I ended up winning 2-0 there. 
That was pretty nice. And so I'm 721 at this point. Mm-hmm. Round 11, I play a guy named Jed. He's playing. I had no idea what he's playing. He's playing Night March. As soon as he flipped over Funkaboo, I was so excited. <laughs> he 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 starts game one, plays down Dimension Valley, puts nine Pokemon in discard. I'm like, okay. I open the Aurora, so I'm like, perfect. I immediately go get Oracorio, put a Lightning on my Zora, free retreat, and then because he had Dimension Valley out, I was able to attack for free. Mm-hmm. And then I took two prizes on the first turn. Boom. So from there, it was just... Retro Stretcher got it back, took more prizes. So that was an easy game one. Game two, three, basically same thing. Just But game two, I went Zerka Tree and Oricari. I like went in between both of them. He didn't. He couldn't do anything about that. So I took, that was like a free win for sure. 2 old there. So I'm 8-2-1 now. Round 12, I hit Wesley Tam. He's playing Hitmonchan, Hitmonchan Wob. So I figured this match will be pretty hard because just Wobble Fist is annoying. I ended up winning 2-0 here. Somehow just picking off his Hitmons with Rayquaza and then Shaman. I was just able to just stay in the lead somehow. And I think he prized Cartana one game. But I ended up winning 2-0 here. So I was super happy to beat this matchup just because I knew it was a really hard one. So at this point, I'm like, oh my god, I can probably make top eight. So I'm 3 0 in the day two. Now I'm 9 2 1. 28 points. So I think at this point, I'm like, all right, I need to win one of my last two rounds to have a chance for top eight. Round 13, I'm against Brian Hunter, who ended up getting top eight also. Um, he played Pikaram. So I'm like, all right, I'm 3 0 1 against Pikaram. Let's see what happens. Game one, really close. I somehow managed to get eight energy on board with with Rayquaza out of nowhere, just one shot in his peak around. And I and then uh, and he didn't play around Coco GX after that, so I was able to. At first, I took a Rayquaza knockout, and the next turn he didn't play around the Coco GX, and I just went boom, three energy knockout. Took six prizes in two turns. Next game he did, he played around it for sure. Next game, but. Next game, I believe I went turn one. Turn one or two, 240 knockout peak around. And I was just like, right, from there, I was just like, I got another Rayquaza knockout. So somehow I pulled that one out. So now I'm 4 0 into day two. Two old him there. So I two old everyone at this point. And now around 14, I'm just going to try to uh, try to ID here. Because guarantee 32 will be top eight. So I'm against Jonathan Croxton playing, you know, his trusty old shot clock. So at this point, I'm like, all right, is he going to want to ID? What's he want to do? So me and him were talking. He was debating if he, if he wanted to scoop ID or ID. I was I was like, whichever one is fine with me. I don't really care. He was looking at the everyone else's pairings and whatnot. He, he just decided to scoop because he did not want to play against Trevenant in top eight. There was a really high chance he would have played against Trevenant in top eight. Uh, so he just conceded. So that put me at first seed. Uh, 11 2 1, 34 match points. So that's, uh, that was day two there. Started off 1 and 2, and you managed to win 11 in a row. A, more, a majority of these games being 2 0s. Yeah. And a lot of these matchups, like, I mean, who would have thought you'd hit an Ultra Necrozma and expand it? Like, come on. Uh, right when I hit that, I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm dead. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> um,. So now you're in top eight, and you got a, you're facing down a teammate in an unfavorable matchup once again. Talk to us about that. Yep. Again, um, I was actually watching the last round of Swiss, and it was Trevenant versus Zork. So I was like, in my head, I was like, I hope, I kind of hope Trevenant would win because I know I would play against Trevenant guaranteed in top eight, which would be a lot easier than Hitmon. But you know, John's my boy and teammate, so I'm actually glad he won. All right, he was able to get top eight. So we play top eight, and John's playing Hitmon Wob. I'm like, great, another Hitmon. But I know I played against John at another regional, and I I tied him, but I know I should have won if I wasn't bad. But And then I know in day two, I had two old to Hitmon. So I know the matchup is winnable. You just got to play like really, really like 
it's just like I don't know. It's just, you gotta play like super smart and like conservative. But the games were super close. Game one was game one. Actually, he dead drew, so I won an easy, easy game one. He literally just like wobble fit, wobble fit, pass, pass, pass. I'm like, all right, cool, knockout. Eventually, I set up because the wobble slowed me down a little bit. So I win game one. Oh, I think I used the arrows GX attack to, to get energy on board. That's how I was able to just finally start attacking. And then game one was just free because he just dead So game two was super close. One one prizes apiece. He took two prizes to go to one prize when he used Nihi Legos. Oh no, I was at two prizes. He used Nihi Lego to copy my Coco GX, I believe, and, and he used a GX attack to knock it out. Top of Thunder. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, oh snap, I forgot you could do that, right? So he's at one prize, I'm at two prizes. I'm like, man, he can win next game, next turn. So next turn, I go... He had a Wobble Fett on the bench with an energy. I completely did not care about the Lego because once I go to one prize, it's useless against yeah. me. So at this point, he has a Wobble on the bench. He's at one prize, I'm at two. My bench, my only attacker on the bench is literally a Rayquaza with three energies. Enough energy on board to kill anything, but... It had 90 damage, so if I attack with it, I lose next turn off the Wobbuffet. So I knew immediately I cannot attack with that Rayquaza. I have to get a fresh Rayquaza, or, or attacker in general. So I ended up, I have to get a fresh attacker, and I have to knock out the the Wobbuffet on the bench, because if he had Energy Guzma, he wins any, anyway next turn. And I knew 100% he had it in his hand because of the way he was acting in the game. Mm-hmm. I can just tell. I could read him. I read him so well. I was like, just the way he, he felt confident. He was like, he wanted to check my discard, you know, trying to play it off. I knew immediately. So I'm like, all right. I have to knock the wobble foot out. I can't. So I, I did a play. So I did a play where I knew I couldn't get another Rayquaza out because of if I goose up the, the wobble, my, my abilities are off and stuff. So, but... I did like an awkward play that I thought I messed up. So I ended up going, first I did Coco Prism, put two energies on board. First, Nihi Lego was so active. Put two, two energy on board. Then I went Ultra Ball for Coco GX. Use Coco's ability. Go to the active. Then retreat it freely because of the aura. Then I guzma up the Waba Fat. Okay. That way, at first I was like, damn it, I think I messed it up because if I goose him off the Wobble Fit, I can't go into Coco. But then I found, then I, then I figured it out. I was like, oh wait, I just go Coco first, free retreat, then goose him Took me like a minute, <laughs> but we got there. So, goose him Wob, go down to 1-1 one, one prizes, and I, I have a fresh big boy ready to knock out anything. Next turn, he doesn't have a way to knock out anything, and I win the following. Oh no, he goose up. He gets another Wobba Fed out with the energy. Guzma was up my Rayquaza. It only had a grass energy, actually, now that I remember. But it had 90 damage on it. So he Guzma's it, basically passes the turn. Now I have a Rayquaza stuck active. Even if I get a Lightning, I can't retreat because Zerora's ability is shut off by Wobba Fed, right? Mm-hmm. There's the only way for me to win the game is literally Guzma out. I draw nothing. I'm like, Oh, my God. If he has an energy, I, I lose this game. So I'm forced to pass. He goes Sycamores with energy completely to win the game. Off of Sycamore. So I'm like, oh, my God. So he's forced to pass. I top that could be a secret for Guzma to win the game. And I was like, oh, my God. Literally won one prizes. So I win 2-0 there off of top deck. So that was my top eight match. Really close. And then, should I just keep going? Keep going. All right, now, top four versus Isaiah, who who had just beat Justin Kulas in top eight. So, I was not confident in this matchup again. Another Zora Garbador, but it's against a, a bit, you know, a really good player. So, uh, I, I didn't know their list, the DDG list, but I knew they played Parallels. I know they didn't play Skyfields. So I was trying really hard not to put my Skyfields down because if I put it down, they could one-shot my red clauses. So I don't think I did until I actually absolutely needed it. 
So in this game, game one was actually close. He he gets double Garbodor out, gets the lock going, has a lock going, got two trash lanches. And I'm like, all right, but I didn't mail too many items, so he wasn't he wasn't one shotting me yet. So like the first knockout I took out was on a as a Garbodor. I knocked out a Garbodor with a Zerora. He hits me. He hits me with Zork on a, on my Zerora. Then I no not Zork Garbodor. And then I take the first prize. Next turn he promotes Zork. Knocks out my Zerora. Now it's two. He's up two prizes. Next turn I go Field Blower Garbodor. Put a bunch of energy on board. One shot Zork that had a dumbbell on it. Actually it had a dumbbell. Okay. One shot it. Now I'm at three. I take three prizes now. He goes one shot to my Rayquaza because I had, I had milled one too many items off of my Stormy Winds. I I don't know if you saw, but I Stormy Winds a Shaman and two Via Seekers. If I discarded, I had one less item. I would have only had eight in the discard, but I had nine. So he was able to one shot my Garbodor. Now it's three three prizes. Oh no, no two to three prizes. So now I'm like, all right, cool. He has another Trubbish on the bench. I'm like, all right, I probably lose next turn, but still keep playing. I I get a Rayquaza out, another Rayquaza out, one shot his Garbodor, but I end him to, to two at the same time. I end him to two, one shot to Garbodor. Now it's two two prizes. And he promotes something. Or he promotes uh, Zark. He gets. He doesn't. Uh, at this point, he has no, no more trubbishes, but he, he has a garbage toxin out. So he locks me in garbage toxin, gets a second dumbbell on the Zor. Ready. I didn't have enough energy on the point on the board this, at this point. I had used my fuel blower the turn before. So at this point, I'm like, all right. Um, he hits me for a hundred on my Rayquaza. And I know he's thinking he, he probably has game next turn because I probably can't one shot the Zork with a dumbbell, especially with the lock. And actually, off my prize following my two prizes a turn before, when I knocked out the Zork, I think, yeah. Um, I got a Dowsing Machine and Sycamore off the prize. So I was like, perfect. I took my turn, Dowsing Machine for Field Blower. Field blower the trash the garbage toxin uh, tool. Field blower the dumbbell. All I needed was one more energy on board. I stormy wings for the seventh energy. One shot Zord to take game one. That was game one. I hit I had field blower 100% MVP. I would have lost without the guard. I went field blower dowsing field blower for four prizes. That was game one. Game two. I was honestly shocked I took game one. I was like, all right, maybe we could do this. Game two. What happens game two? I think he goes first, gets turn one, bridge it, gets Sudowoodle down. I'm like, all right, he, he's got a pretty nice start. I go first. My hand is actually really good. Like Ultra Ball, Guzma, Sycamore, double Max Elixir, Energy. So I go Ultra Ball, Energy away, get Rayquaza. Stormy Winds Energy. If I hit double Max Elixir here, I'm able to just use the Guzma and knock out his only Zorua with a double colorless on it. Oh, okay. So, I am... I hit the first Max Elixir with the second one, so I'm like, oh man, that would have been nice. I'm forced to just sick him at this point, so I'm like, alright, whatever. That would have been too good. I showed them, I was like, man, I could have Guzma if I hit both Elixirs. It's like, oh my god, that would have been nice. <laughs> So, unfortunately, did not get that, but I Sycamore, I just attach a grass to Rayquaza. Don't do, I put a, my own Sudowoodle down, because he only have, he had four benches, so I made him a little limited there, there, and just pass. I take like a sip, simple turn, pass the turn. He goes, gets Zorak out, hits me for 100 on my active Rayquaza with no energy on it. But he doesn't get Garbodor out. My go... My hand's like mediocre. I just like attach again to a Rayquaza. I should have I should have Tempest this turn. This is where I knew I, I, I kind of misplayed here. I realized I should have Tempest this turn when I had the chance. Um, but I had did it. I did it after he did it. He hit me for 100 on my active. So he hit me for 100. Then I Tempest. But I could have Tempest 
going first. Mm-hmm. But I let him hit me for 100 <clears throat> frames, which was silly. I was like, oh, I should have Tempest a turn four. So I Tempest, he goes, knocks out Zoro, uh, my Rayquaza. He's up two prizes, free two prizes. But off my Tempest, I hit Field Blower. Field Blower, Garbodor. He gets a Garbodor, no turn four. I get Field Blower, Garbodor, Field Blower, the tool on the another dumbbell on the Zora. I think they played two dumbbells. Field Blower, the, the dumbbell. I get seven energy on board, and one shot Zorak. He has no Zorks at this point, but I have enough items in my discard for his Garbodor or Trash Lance to one shot me, unfortunately. But I, I was one over again, but I was forced to use like the Field Blower to go to my ninth item. Yeah. I, I kind of had to. It knocks me out, and but I had another Rayquaza already, so one shot his uh, Garbodor with my Rayquaza. Then he brings up a Zorak again. Hits me for 100, I think, or something like that, or 120. And I just, I don't think he gets, I am I think he with the tool here. Oh, no, he didn't have another Garbodor. That's right. He was trying to set up another Garbodor, but he had a, tr- a lone Trubbish. Trubbish, energy, he whips. That's what it was. He sycamores to try to win the game. All he needed was a Garbodor, I think. Whips completely. So I'm like, oh my god, we got a chance, we got a chance. I'm at three prizes, he's at two prizes. So I take my turn, I Guzma, knock out the lone Trubbish, no other threats at this point. So two, two prizes, I'm like, all right, cool. Knock out the Trubbish, I'm like, oh my god, we could probably win. He goes, takes his turn, bridges for double Trubbish. So I'm like, uh oh, he's gonna put me like on one turn clock. I go. Parallel, at this point, I only have three bench, but he parallels me to three. So I'm like, oh my god. I have a let loose in my hand, but I'm, I knew I had a sky field in my deck. I'm like, please, let me top deck like a sky field. I can let loose, try to do something. Top deck sky field. I was like, oh my god. Sky field down, let loose for four. I hit the Guzma to knock out Lele for the last two prizes. And then that's that's how I won the second game. I was like, oh my god. I can't believe I just won that. That was a crazy series, yeah. game one. Yeah, I know. It was like, he has so many trash answers, but I was just able to get through them. I mean, he should have won game two. He just whipped the Carpador to, to literally win the game. Mm-hmm. So uh, I went 2-0 there, so I'm 2-0 against literally every single person day two. <laughs> and now you're in the finals. Now we're in the finals against Sam Ertman playing Trevin. I, I already knew at this point... I have a really good chance of winning. So, but I didn't. I didn't know if he played Muck or not. That was like the only thing I cared about. Did he play Muck or not? I know he played. Trev, I know he played uh, Lele or Promo Lele. But I didn't really care about the card. I only cared about the Muck. But I did still play around the, the Lele. I, I only benched three Pokemon. And then game one, I just I went first. Set up three energy on Rayquaza, energy on my Zerora, pass. Next turn, I have five energy on board. Start one shot in Trevenant. One shot. Every turn, I would just one shot. One shot. One shot. One shot. Eventually, it comes down to where he or Sam realizes that he might have a chance to win the game. But in real reality, he didn't. But <laughs> I'll just be straightforward. He didn't. There's no way he still could have won. He, he had Wobbuffet. He one-shotted a, a, a Rayquaza with a Wobbuffet. And then I know I was. I went back and like read the chat because sometimes I'll go back and read my games mm-hmm. and read the chat says. And they say, they say next turn he would have won with Lele promo, but no, he couldn't. He would have been thirty short. So I ended up winning. So actually, I there was a turn where where he knocks out the Wob or knocks out Rayquaza with Wob effect, goes to four prizes. I'm at two prizes. I bring up a. No, I'm at one prize. I bring up a Zerora. And people thought I misplayed here because, first of all, Zoro gets shut off because it's a Wobbuffet active. Mm-hmm. But I knew if I whiff knock, if I whiff game this turn, I can just use the GX attack to 100% guarantee game next turn. I can okay. just put energy on my board and just one shot anything. Because I knew he couldn't win next turn no matter what. Even if he Lele Pro mode, he was still 30 short from winning from taking four prizes. But that's why I brought up 
Zora to all the viewers watching this. There you go. So, uh, but luckily for me, I ended up getting game that turn either way from promoting Zora because I drew a let loose, let loose into Dowsing Machine Grass Energy, Dowsing Machine for Rescue Stretcher, got the Lele, got the Lele, used it for Guzma, Guzma up whatever, and then attached another grass to her closet. One game one. Pretty handily, even though it didn't look like it, but I knew for sure I was winning that game. Um, I saw I win game one. Game two was so much easier. He opens Ditto, no other base, uh, Ditto and one Phantom. I'm just like, okay. I opened Zara perfect. I knew at this point I knew he didn't play Muck, so I'm, I already knew I kind of won the game after I opened Zara. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> I'm like, all right, cool. Open Zara. Sycamore, play some stuff. Don't get a Rayquaza, but I get a lot, lot of energy in the discard, so I just wait. I wait till next turn to get a Rayquaza and then use a GS attack to power everything up. Next turn, he, he gets a Trev. I'm like, cool. My turn. Zora, power up a Rayquaza and a Shaman, fully powered. He goes. I think he's Silent Pierce or something. I'm just like, one shot. He goes, does something. I go one shot. One shot every single turn until I won the game. So game two was a lot easier than game one, but I knew the matchup was fine, especially with no muck. The game, the matchup was like so favorable; it's just ridiculous. So I'm finally happy that I hit an easy matchup in the finals. Because yeah. leading up to that finals, boy, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, you had, had, to to... Hit, had to be two Hitmons, a Zoro Garb, a Sableye. Like it was like okay. You had a rough road there, but you're so finally a regional champion. One, two. <clears throat> And then technically going 13-0-1 after that. Yeah. So that was pretty nice. And then finally won my first regional. Finally. Two second places, two second places before that. So so, finally got the dub and a nice 5K. I guess, hey. I'll, I guess I'll ask the cheesy question. How does it feel being a regional champ? Felt nice, even though there wasn't a big crowd. <laughs> it was nice, though. I mean, Sam was pretty cool. He... It was cool. He knew he knew the matchup was bad. He was just like he was just chill, but you know he played it out for the stream and stuff. But no, I was happy. Finally got a win there. All right. Well, thank you for being here with us today, Jose. Before I peace out, I guess let's thank you for the time and let's hear some of those shout outs you got for us. For sure. First off, shout out to you. You know, thank you for the interview. Shout out to Team ARG. Finally got that ARG win, you know, DDG, we catching up, you know. <laughs> we just need six even though, more. <laughs> even though it's kind of impossible at this point with the amount of events left, <laughs> which is funny. Uh, shout out to TC Evolutions, best GX markers, best dice. Check them out. Get yourself some nice dice and GX markers. Um, and shout out to 60 Cards. I write articles on there. Uh, I also do coaching. If you guys are interested in coaching, hit me up. Let me know. And that's it. Well, well thank you. I'll leave Jose's social uh, media information in the description below. I'll link his Twitter. I'll link his deck code if you guys want to try it out. I know there's no expanded events coming up. But if you guys have a cup or anything or maybe a challenge or just, you know, you want to just try out the deck because it's a really fun deck. It was one of the decks that Jose showed me when he first made it. And I thought it was a really fun deck. I just don't play anything other than Vespaquin. So... Uh, yeah but thank you guys so much for watching uh congratulations to jose once again and please leave a like subscribe and adios until next time Peace.